Welcome back to Beauty and the Bolt. Zyla here, and I am so excited to announce the next chapter of Beauty and the Bolt, the channel. I started this channel eight years ago when I was still in college working at my college's makerspace because I wanted a way to make engineering education and maker education more accessible for everybody. But a lot has changed since then, and in 2020, I graduated and started my own channel. Uh, and Beauty and the Bolt, the channel and the nonprofit, all went to Kaylee, who's the CEO of Reinvented Magazine, and she has taken over all of our in person programming. And now I'm really excited to tell you that she is bringing Beauty and the Bolt, the YouTube channel, back. I think what a lot of people don't realize on this channel is that uh, my best friend in college, Andrew, and I founded Beauty and the Bolt. It was never supposed to be a YouTube channel. It was that we, I worked at what was the largest public makerspace in the world at that point. And my favorite part of that job was people would come in being like, this is where I'm at and this is where I'm trying to get to and I would get to help them figure out how to get from point A to point B and the policy changed from instead of being able to sit down with people and figure out their project together, it was a ha like sit them down with this like long written tutorial that was written by an engineer and it would be like 100 pages on how to use a MakerBot replicator too. And I was like, this is not sustainable. And the people that this is impacting the most are people who were really scared to walk into this yeah. space in the first place. And for the most part, that was like women and minorities, like people who didn't feel safe to start with in a makerspace or in a machine shop. And so my friend Andrew and I's logic was like, let's make tutorial videos that are taught by women that fill that gap. And so we made six videos for free for this makerspace and we handed it to them. We were like, we made you these videos. It wasn't until after we had made those videos that we came up with the name Beauty and the Bolt. We came up with like all of the branding of yeah. the channel. And that was just because we had made them for one specific space and they didn't want it. So we just put it on YouTube instead. It just snowballed where we started getting requests for like other tools or other projects that people were interested in integrating into their curriculum. Mm -hmm. And that's when we realized that the channel's videos were being used in a lot of other makerspaces that wasn't just ours. And so we we ended up filing as a 501c3 nonprofit later that year, and we, we made a bunch of custom curriculum for school districts, and we started trying to add like Common Core curriculum to our videos, mm -hmm. and that was sort of like the direction that Beauty and the Bold went. Started, Andrew and I started getting pretty burned out, and then in 2020, we decided to kind of like go our own ways and uh, I started my own YouTube channel that was just like Xyla Foxlin and instead of being educational it was things that were pushing me uh, and this channel kind of unfortunately got put to the wayside for a long time but when we dissolved the nonprofit Kaylee took over all of our in-person programming and so she has been the one running the Princesses with Power Tools program, like all of the STEM education stuff that we were doing with K-12 schools. And now she is finally bringing back the YouTube channel too. And I'm so excited. What is Reinvented strength here and like what are people gonna be seeing on the channel? Reinvented is really founded in the concept of storytelling. And that was something that I think grew out of COVID for us too and it was just, we, like the group that started Reinvented, myself and all of the like incredible volunteers that back this up, weren't seeing ourselves portrayed in the media and honestly, like other magazines that were designed for teen girls, which is pretty much what we were when we started this. It was like, we were, we were kiddos. So we, we started this magazine and we, we were all engineers. We knew nothing about storytelling. We knew nothing about writing articles or printing magazines or anything like that, but we, learned a ton along the way. And I think what we've learned more than anything else was that representation really does play a huge role in getting you know more people just generically, like seeing you know the whole idea of like, if you can see it, you can be it. Um, but it's being able to see yourself on the page of a magazine made such a difference for the girls that were reading our magazine. And it wasn't just that they were seeing themselves, but they were seeing this idea of somebody that they could become and not just this like makeup crazed or like boy crazed idea of what they you know are told that they should be and so that was really kind of the foundation and kind of bringing in a beauty in the bolt gave us the ability to take everything that we had on these pages and bring it to the new level of showing girls in real life 
that you can actually do this. That it's not just this thing you can read about, but it's a thing that you can actually go and do. Yeah, I feel like um, the Beauty and the Bull reinvented merge was really great for both <laughs> works because yeah. especially reinvented was so is so good on like the science and engineering and showing girls what careers that they can have and beating the bolt was very focused on like putting tools in the hands yeah. of students uh and those two are a really good yeah. combo yeah it definitely was i think a huge component that we had been missing we knew that this was important and so at the back of every issue we put in some sort of diy activity i wrote one of them you for the did first issue. a couple of them yeah, yeah. Um, and so we, we had all those in there, but I mean, running a magazine is kind of hard because you, you hope that people are reading it and you know how many you're sending out, but you really don't get to see the impact firsthand. And so there's this huge block of, okay, we sent you this, this DIY activity. Are kids actually doing it? Are they feeling confident enough to do it? Are they like actually wanting to engage in this? And then you go to a princess event and it's a, it's a completely different atmosphere. You can see the kids' faces get excited when they see a power tool and a princess, and you can actually see them feel confident in themselves by the end of it in doing that activity, which is something that I I don't know. Like I, I hope that the magazine is able to do. Like by the time you finish it, like you want to do the activity, but I know that there's still this huge confidence gap there. Yeah, for sure. So what um, what is the channel going to be going forward? Okay, so I I have this title. What's up, girl? What's up, girl? Yeah, but I feel like we need like a little more chaos. What a little do you think? energy, yeah. a little dance, a yeah. little dancey move. Yeah, a little dancey, dancey move. move. That's good. I like that. I've been plotting this. If I oh. if I start doing this, then Kaylee has to also. What? <laughs> so we we're trying to pretty much merge the two concepts. So starting off every episode with a little bit of storytelling, a little bit of interview. That's I'm hoping a more casual style and really just getting to know some of the women and really cool feminists and engineers and scientists within Reinvented's network that we already have. Um, so hopefully it's a bunch of familiar faces for a lot of people, um, people who we think are super cool, but then pretty cool guys. Uh, <laughs> but then the, the other half of each episode is doing an activity and it's something that like we, we want you all at home to be able to do for yourselves in some way, shape or form. And we may get a little bit more chaotic with things as some of the episodes go on, but we, we want to make sure that there's always at least some, if not that exact level of chaos, slightly less chaotic version of the activity that you all can follow along with too, since that's kind of what Beauty and the Bolt was all about. It was about giving all of you new education, new like ability to do cool stuff. The yeah. science and engineering. So I wanna I wanna start with like the hottest of topics. Can you guess what it is? Hot topic? No. Oh. That was a good one though. Thanks. I did like hot topic. But I, I would I'd like to talk about raccoons. <gasps> I love raccoons. I know. And I have no idea where the freak that came from. <laughs> I like that this was the starting question. A couple years ago, I was pretty sick and working on a project, like really like the loopy tired. And um, one of my friends showed me a raccoon meme and it was mm -hmm. two raccoons was so looking good. confused, holding an abacus. Ooh. And it said, think twice, bestie. I don't even think once. Ooh, I remember that one. And I had never related to anything more than that. But besides that, you have been incorporating raccoons into a ton of projects lately. Um, can you maybe tell us more about your channel and what you've been up to for the last I've, a lot of years now? Actually, your channel four. is like four, yeah. Yeah, all right, we're not that old yet. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so I started my own channel during the pandemic. Uh, it doesn't have a fun name like Beauty and the Bold. It's just called Zyla Foxlin, which is my name, which is a fun name, actually. Yeah, I, I was take gonna it back. Say, uh, I would say of all the names, yours is more on the fun side. Yeah. Yeah. But I think part of why I was like getting really exhausted running Beauty and the Bold was that like I was trying to make it educational, and in doing that, I had to already know how to do the thing I was teaching, and that like wasn't as intellectually stimulating as like building projects that were way out of my skill so you set. So you you don't know what you're doing now. Yeah, 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 and that's like by design. So every project I build on my new channel is kind of like we are figuring it out together. Yeah. Um, and by we, I guess I mean like me and my camera on a tripod. But yeah, it feels and sometimes like sometimes me when I when I get to and show sometimes it yourself. Kelly yeah. when when she comes over. Uh, 
Yeah, but it's, so I've done like a bunch of high power rocket stuff. I've done, um, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> no, honestly. I've done a bunch of high power rocket stuff. I built like a, a teardrop camper in three weeks, like a canoe, a kayak, a sailboat, um, among many other random assorted, assorted projects. All right, so I figured to kind of commemorate your existence on this channel and know that you will hopefully come back more for some things, maybe, we'll see, uh, that we would do a Beauty and the World classic. Um, one of my favorite projects that you guys worked on was this backlit constellation projector. And this is something that we've done quite a bit now with Princesses with Power Tools. So we are gonna make our very own backlit constellation, um, but we're gonna do a Princesses with Power Tools style. What does that mean? We're gonna find out. Okay, cool. Deal. Sick. You get to pick a tiara. Okay, so we are making these. I think they're pretty cute. They're pretty cute. Yeah, cute yeah. little constellation projectors. And the idea is you can actually like put a little tea light in the bottom and leave it like on your little bedside table and it'll light up. Um, cute. One of my favorite constellations is Orion. Pretty, pretty snazzy. So that's the, uh, that's the constellation I picked for this. Um, and we are going to do it Princesses of Power Tool style, which means uh, I think we gotta pick a tiara first. I want this one because I feel like the wow. bronze really goes with my outfit. Okay, so uh, safety first because it's, you know. <sighs> oh my gosh. So anyone who's ever participated in one of our princess events knows that, you know, you pretty much make your own little template that looks a little bit less fancy than the laser engraved one. Um, but each star or dot that you draw represents somewhere you gotta drill. So, there you go. Oh Put God, those drilling she's, skills she's to the test. She's trusting me with the power tool. This is a hand drill. It's probably the best tool to start with if you're new to power tools. Um, best used with tiara. Best used glasses. with a tiara. You really should also put your hair up. Yeah. This kit is actually going to be available for purchase on Reinvented's website. So if you don't have a laser cutter, you can purchase the kit and it'll pretty much come just like how we started where you get all the pieces, but none of the stars are drilled out. So you can go ahead and use your drill at home with uh, your smallest drill bit. It'll come with instructions on how to use the drill, how to put all the pieces together and kind of what step-by-step step each part is supposed to look like. Um, but if you do have access to a laser cutter, you can download the laser cut file or the design file for free from our website as well and make yourself one at home. These are battery operated drills. Almost all drills nowadays are battery operated. Um, to pop the battery out and charge it, you slide it out by pushing this button here, slide it back on, and then this button right here changes the direction of the drill. For drilling holes, you'll only ever need to be on forwards mode. If you're working with screws, you would use forwards mode to put in a screw backwards mode to like remove the screw. Um, so that'll put you in backwards mode, this will put you in forwards mode. But when you drill your hole, you wanna make sure that you are nice and straight with the drill to the wood. And this is the part where I think a lot of people are misinformed a little bit is, so we're gonna drill our hole through the wood. But and not then, through the table. But not through the table. <laughs> make sure you're on like a scrap piece like this and then keep it going forwards as you pull it out and that'll give you a slightly cleaner hole in it. Um, and so now we have our little, little hole. Nice. All right, throw that baby off. Little constellation. Cool. All right, let's put the rest of it together. Next, you would assemble all the pieces. Um, they, they fit together theoretically pretty nice. Laser cutters can be a little bit tricky. Um, and in those cases, you might just need to like sand the edges, which we'll, we'll kind of show you in a minute. Um, put the light, or your tea light, or fairy lights, or flashlight, phone light, or we'll get creative um, underneath, and it'll pretty much show and shine all of the stars through. So it's like a little, little projector. There's a couple places where you'll see like the pegs are a little bit too big to fit in the next one. And so there's some places where we just have to cut off a little bit of extra. You should use sandpaper and it should go really, really quick. Just sand down the edges to make them a little bit smaller so they fit really nice. Good deal. And then to see your magical twinkle light sparkle, you just gotta find a light source for inside of your box. We're using a flashlight, but you should probably find a flatter light source. And then turn off the lights. Ready? Yeah. Set. Whoa! Zyla. Kaylee. Zyla. Kaylee. 
Thank you so much. You know, thanks for having me. It was fun to be a guest on this channel. Yeah, okay, get out. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Your All channel right. now, bye! Well, you got me now, folks. Make sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next chapter of this channel. And until then, thanks for watching the first episode of What's, What's Up, Girl? Up, girl? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>